All right. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Stephanie Hillebrand. I am a clinical psychologist and the proud owner of Independence Counseling and Psychological Services. It is a new mental health clinic in downtown Howell. I've worked with St. Joseph Mercy Outpatient Behavioral Health Services for the past five years, and I'm now extending my services into private practice to better serve Howell and the surrounding communities. Um, I'm a cognitive behavioral and humanistic therapist. I work with individuals of all ages, from children to adults, as well as families struggling with mild to moderate symptoms of mental health issues, including grief, loss, depression, anxiety, trauma, behavioral problems, and life transitions. Our mission at Independence Counseling and Psychological Services is to help people discover their independence. We just opened in March, March 5th, 2020. Uh, the Howell Chamber of Commerce helped kick us off with a ribbon cutting ceremony, which was great. And we are up and running. So uh, think of us for your mental health needs now and in the future. Today, I will be presenting on tips for wellness for COVID-19. Uh, we'll be going over the five areas of wellness I've chosen to talk about today. There are several other areas, but I just thought um, to keep it short and brief, we would focus on the five areas of physical, emotional, intellectual, social, and spiritual realms. We'll discuss the risk factors of mental health, populations, and in children. Uh, and the big part of this is ways to increase coping skills and well-being during the COVID-19 pandemic. I welcome you to ask questions and share throughout the presentation. I'm hoping this will be really interactive and more conversational as opposed to me just talking the whole time. Um, and hopefully we'll have a good discussion at the end. Yep, we can go ahead and get going. If anybody um, has a question throughout or um, you'd like to say something, go ahead and just open up the chat queue and um, I'll just try and monitor that. And then um, Stephanie, I'll try and stop you to answer any questions throughout. Um, and we'll see how this goes. So um, we're excited to have you and thanks for doing this. All right, thank you, Janelle. The first area of wellness we're gonna talk about today is the physical wellness, which promotes proper care of our bodies for optimal health and functioning. It involves routinely carrying out behaviors that have a significant impact on our well wellness, such as routine checkups, a balanced diet, exercise, and it destroys destructive habits, such as tobacco, alcohol, and other drugs. Being physically active is crucial to keeping your body in its top condition. A few proven benefits of physical activity are strength in bones, muscles, reduced risk of disease and stroke, and more energy. Exercise is the number one most effective, excuse me, most effective antidepressant. It is important to nurture, nurture your body by eating a well-balanced diet as well. Filling yourself with a variety of nutrients and vitamins will not only help prevent illness, but will also keep your body functioning at its best. The emotional wellness concerns your body's ability to express your feelings, cope with stress, maintain satisfying relationships, and deal with conflict. It encompasses optimism, self-esteem, and self-acceptance. It involves cultivating a positive attitude and being attentive to your negative feelings as well. Maintaining a healthy emotional life is important to overall health. Taking care of your emotional health allows you to accept how you feel and grants you power over feelings. If you are able to form more desirable relationships with others, then you are able to appreciate more emotional expression. Intellectual wellness encourages us to engage in creative and mentally stimulating activities. It involves actively participating in educational, cultural, and community events, and combining life lessons with those learned through life experience. It's about nurturing curiosity and lifelong learning. Intellectual wellness allows you to become more mindful and better rounded. It leads to exploration and stimulates curiosity. Curiosity is important because it motivates you to try new things and develop an understanding of how you see the relationship between yourself and yourself, others, and the environment. Um, how are we doing? Is it boring or are we all still hanging in there? Really helpful. <laughs> 
All right, the next area of wellness is social wellness, which is the ability to successfully interact with people by developing friendships, having healthy romantic relationships, and participating in the community. It allows us to have relationships that can offer support and guidance. Social wellness also allows you to build healthy relationships with others. Having a supportive social network allows you to develop assertive skills and become comfortable with who you are in social situations. Surrounding yourself with a positive social network increases your self-esteem. It also enables you to create boundaries that encourage communication, trust, and conflict management. In addition, having good social wellness is critical to being emotionally resilient. Uh, the final area of wellness is spiritual wellness, which is the willingness to seek meaning and purpose in human existence. It means being open to diverse multicultural beliefs, religious faith, values, morals, and ethics that help guide your life. It also can mean knowing which resources to use to cope with issues that come up in everyday life. Spiritual wellness allows you to develop a set of values that help you seek meaning and purpose in life. It allows you to appreciate your life experiences for what they are, therefore creating balance and acceptance. Risk factors are the characteristics, genetics, or variables that, in, that increase a person's chance of developing a negative or severe reaction to a stimulus. Risk factors for mental health issues include personal or family history of depression, suicidal ideation, or suicide, personal or family history of depression, excuse me, of mental illness, personal or family history of substance abuse, lack of social support, and pre-existing health concerns or financial stressors. Risk factors that are specifically due to the COVID-19 pandemic include fear of death of self or a loved one, changes in daily life and functioning, financial stresses and concerns, uncertainty about the future, changes in social and occupational tasks, changes in sleep pattern, changes in appetite, increased use of tobacco or alcohol, and worsening chronic health problems. The populations that are at greater risk for contracting COVID-19 are the elderly and people with chronic diseases, as well as children and teens. People who are helping with the response to COVID-19, like doctors and other healthcare providers and first responders are at greater risk. People who have mental health conditions, including substance abuse, are also at high risk of contracting COVID-19. Symptoms in children that demonstrate a strong emotional reaction to the COVID-19 pandemic that may require a higher level of care or may lead to problems or disorders later on include excessive crying or, ir or irritation in younger children, returning to behaviors they have outgrown for example, toileting accidents or bedwetting, excessive worry or sadness, unhealthy eating or sleeping habits, irritability and acting out behaviors in teens, poor school performance or avoiding online learning, difficulty with attention and concentration, avoidance of activities enjoyed in the past, unexplained headaches or body pain, and the use of tobacco alcohol or other drugs. The protective factors are the personality or individual characteristics that combat unhealthy reactions to stimulus. These include problem solving skills, being self-motivated or driven, having an easy temperament, being optimistic, having a sense of purpose or meaning, having relationships with family and the community, and flexibility or the ability to adapt to change. Protective factors in regard to biological and physiological health in response to COVID-19 are stay home as much as possible, wash your hands often, especially after returning home from an outing, cough and sneeze into a tissue, then immediately discard of it. If a tissue is not available, sneeze or cough directly into your sleeve. Wash your clothes regularly, especially if sneezing or coughing often. 
avoid crowded places and engage in social distancing. Do not touch your face. Limit the amount of objects you share with others, for example, cell phones, tablets, keyboards, and wash your hands and use san or use sanitizer uh, after use. All right, this is more of the meat and potatoes of probably what you joined in to learn about today, and it's tips for well-being and coping skills during this time. There are many ways to increase well-being and coping skills during the COVID-19 pandemic. Some of the coping skills overlap in areas, so you'll hear a couple of them um, in several different areas of wellness. For physical wellness, engage in physical activity at least 30 minutes every day. Avoid tobacco, alcohol, and other drugs. Get seven to nine hours of sleep. Control meal portions and eat a variety of foods. Manage stress by focusing on one task at a time. Join an online fitness community. There are several free workouts available out there. Um, Beachbody has one that you can join for free right now. And the space um, in Brighton is offering free yoga online virtually. So joining um, an online fitness community since the gyms are shut down would be a great way to get exercise and be a part of a community. Go outside, get fresh air, go for a walk or a bike ride, and follow the health precautions discussed earlier especially stay home and wash your hands. I but need to find a way to get myself downstairs to start working out. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to do it. I got to get going. Uh, I think self-motivation is one of the most challenging parts. We all know what we want. It's how do we get ourselves yeah. to do it? Yeah. Just got to get down there and do it. Me too, to be honest. <laughs> Um, for emotional wellness, take an hour or more each day to unplug from phones, social media, and your computer. Exercise regularly if you can get yourself downstairs to do it. Uh, stay on top of your work tasks or daily routines. Get seven to nine hours of sleep every night. Meditate or practice yoga. Make time to listen, not compete with your friends and family. Ask for help from family members or close friends. If you are struggling to manage emotionally during this time, come see a therapist at Independence Counseling and Psychological Services or another mental health service. Please do not suffer in silence during this time or feel like you have to get through this by yourself. We are here to help and we can offer services that um, may ease the stress during that time, this time. For intellectual wellness, make learning a priority in your life. Read for pleasure or listen to an audiobook. Stay updated on local and world news from reputable sources, but also take breaks. Limit focus on negative news and social media. Choose a creative hobby. Stay involved with the community and community events that will be held in the future. Play a board game or card game, either with someone you live with or use a FaceTime app. Not talking about video games, I'm talking about good old fashioned board games, card games. Do not spend, do not spend hours scrolling through social media. Try to find ways to challenge your mind cognitively to keep those neur neural networks firing for when we uh, get back to a different way of living. For social wellness, practice social distancing while keeping in touch with supportive family and friends. Limit social media, join an online club or organization, attend wellness programs or other webinars offered by the Howell Chamber of Commerce, replace face-to-face -face interactions with online communication with the use of virtual tools. For spiritual wellness, ways to increase well-being and coping skills, are to practice acceptance. Look for a religious faith that you agree with. Spend time meditating or practicing mindful relaxation. Attend an online worship service. Get some me time in. Spend time in nature. Find purpose and meaning by living each day in the moment. Practice love, patience, and gratitude. My husband wanted me to add to that don't be a jerk. 
uh, as I was practicing <laughs> last night, but he did not use the word jerk. <laughs> but love one another, pray patient, practice patience and kindness, and that's how we're all going to get through this together. For parents of children who are under the age of 18, um, here are some tips for how to help your kids get through this. Take time to talk with your child or teen about the COVID-19 pandemic. Answer questions and share facts about COVID-19 in a way that your child or teen can understand. Reassure your child that they are safe. Let them know it is okay if they feel upset or scared. Share with them how you deal with your own stress so that they can learn how to cope from you. Limit your family's exposure to news coverage of the event, especially social media. Children may misinterpret what they hear and can be frightened about something they do not understand. Try to keep up with regular routines. Since schools are closed, create a schedule for learning activities and relaxing and fun activities. Be a role model, take breaks, get plenty of sleep, exercise, and eat well. Connect with your family and friends while continuing to practice social distancing. If you begin to notice changes in your child's behaviors or emotional state, I am available for consultation, guidance, or treatment if necessary. I'm here to help. Please don't hesitate to reach out. For the responders to the COVID-19 pandemic, our heroes on the front line, Acknowledge that secondary traumatic stress can impact anyone helping families. Allow time for, your, for you and your family to recover from responding to the pandemic. Create a plan for personal self-care activities that you enjoy, such as connecting with friends and family, exercising, or reading a book. Take a break from media coverage of COVID-19. Ask for help if you feel overwhelmed or concerned that the COVID-19 pandemic is affecting your ability to care for yourself or your family as you did before the pandemic. Again, please do not suffer in silence and reach out for help. All right, in summary, the main points that I'm hoping that you take away from this are the five areas of wellness. Um, to set limits on media consumption, including social media, local and national news. Stay active, get enough sleep, eat healthy, go outside, engage in habits that are not electronic as much as possible. Connect with loved ones and others who may be experiencing stress about the pandemic. Talk about your feelings and enjoy conversation unrelated to COVID-19. Stay home, stay safe, and wash your hands often. All right. I'm hoping that um, we can have a better uh, discussion um, um, or answer any questions that anyone had. We did have um, Yorkshire shared that they made a child packet for their residents and it has a coping activity um, for, ch for, it's a child packet um, activity book in it and it might be a good idea. She was wondering if it might be a good idea for um, other people's customers and I, I would think that um, that's a great idea um, and is, is, is that something that you guys might be willing to share with the group <laughs> Hi, I'm so sorry about that <laughs> I would love to share to find out how to put it in there if you want to email it we could um, email it out to um, the participants today or um, to no problem we have a 411 packet that our um, corporate had us do but I, I am all about children. Children is like my whole life. And so I came up with the child's packet because I can only imagine kind of how they're going through it. So, but I'd love to, I'll email it to the, Katie, would you put yeah. it in the group or something? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to oh, use it. Too. She's just over there, social distancing at its finest. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, if you just, you know what, you can even just email it to me and then if anybody's interested in, um, a copy, just let me know and we'll send it out. Okay, she's gonna send it right now. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so did anybody have any questions for Stephanie? Stephanie, thank you so much for um, going through some of those things. I think that um, all of us can relate to at least one or potentially several of those. Um, all right. Well, I can speak to Karen's question from earlier. She said she struggles to actually get up and go downstairs to work out. Part of 
uh, creating a routine for yourself. If you plan to do something, we have a better tendency to stick to plans than if we just have the thought of, oh, I'd like to work out. Oh, I need to. Oh, I'm um, getting lazy or I'm eating too much. Having a plan of I'm setting my alarm for tomorrow to get up at eight and then I'm going to do this. If you have that plan and actually write it down, you're more apt to stick to it rather than off thoughts that just come and go. So if you're struggling to engage in a habit that, um, that you want to make more part of your daily routine, create a schedule for it. And, That's a good idea. Yeah, I could have Alexa, I could have Alexa remind me like at 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. go downstairs mm -hmm. and then just do it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like how we did in our normal life. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is not normal. Um, Sandy Cortez had a question. Um, she said, what are some things that we can watch for with our employees um, to make sure that their overall health and well-being is um, good, considering that the only way that they can communicate with them right now is via email, phone, or Zoom? Um. Honestly, we have to trust that people are able to recognize some of those things in themselves and checking in. How are you doing? What are you, what are you struggling with? Um, I guess noticing difference in work performance, uh, whether it's email response time or quality of work would be some things that you can look for, but really just asking people, how are you doing? Generally, people want to tell you, I'm having a really hard time or, um, you know, I can't believe I'm, I'm, I can't believe this is happening. People like to talk. And if you give them um, space to do it, they will. I don't know if that helps, Sandy. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, if anybody has any other ideas, you can chime in too. But I think that um, we've been, and I'm sure you're doing this too, Sandy, but we've been doing um, team check-ins when we can, and um, which is we try to shoot for every morning at least touching base um, via phone. And then if we can't make it via phone, um, then we try to um, touch base individually one-on-one -on -one throughout the day. And just, um, and we start our meetings by sharing something um, positive. So sharing a piece of positive information um, about your personal life and then something about your professional life as well. Um, so that's kind of one thing that we do. And I think that we've all been doing a really good job of just checking in on each other and just mm -hmm. saying, hi, how are, how are you doing? And because I mean, um, I'm sending these notes out, but I'm also receiving them from other team members too, which is just really, really nice. So um, thanks guys, you're awesome. <laughs> um, somebody said one thing that they've implemented at work is to have Zoom coffee break times. Um, and that has been fun. Okay, and then Yorkshire sent that to my email. So again, if you'd like a copy of that children's packet, make sure that you email me and I'll email you directly. I don't know if the chat will save. So if you put your email in the chat, make sure that you email me directly at jbest.howl.org and we'll get that out. Are there any other questions? Um, any like really cool things that you guys are doing that you think are working really well that you'd like to share as far as either like self-motivating. Um, one of the things that we didn't get a chance to talk about in our mug to mug yesterday is how people are really um, taking that time and finding that work home life balance now that you are working at home and how do you, how do you put a hard stop on that? So how, what are you guys doing? Cause I know Stephanie mentioned um, making sure that you're taking at least an hour a day to unplug and step away from different like social medias and stuff. Um, so I don't know if you guys are picking up my background noise or not, but it's a little bit crazy here. <laughs> um, so I don't know if, um, anybody's doing that or struggling with that. Um, and if you'd be interested in sharing. Um, I know for me, when I, finish my day, I put my computer away. So right now my kitchen table is my office, if you will. So at 5 30, 6 o'clock, whatever time I set, my computer gets turned off. It goes into the work bag like I would be leaving for the next day, even though I know I'm not. Um, and then I don't look at it again. So I have that set time of when I walk or the kids walk in the door after daycare, I am mom, I am no longer working. And that's really helped. Like I literally turn off my computer, 
set that time and I feel like everyone can wait until tomorrow. Like nothing is earth shattering that needs to happen right away. I will get back to you when I can. And that's helped to kind of let me be mom and de-stress and I don't look at social media, like I don't do anything. So I try to stay as unattached as I can, especially now when the kids are wanting my attention and why can't they go to school and see their friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's a great tip. And I think that um, it's good to do. I, does anybody have anything else that they wanted to share on that? Um, you know, how they've kind of been managing the day-to-day -day, um, schedule type of things and, and having that balance? I think the biggest thing for me has been getting outside. I know Stephanie mentioned that several times and especially with the weather being mild and sunny the last day or two, um, getting outside and just getting fresh air, regardless of what I'm doing when I do it has made a huge impact for me, just being out of the house. Yeah, absolutely. I think I can agree. And it's been nice that we've at least had some milder weather so we can get outside. And I think somebody mentioned yesterday too, even if it's cold, <laughs> we're getting outside and getting that fresh air because it can be really helpful. Um, I think um, Stephanie mentioned too, just, you know, setting a schedule, not just, I don't know, um, but like writing it down and making sure that you stick to it. So um, that might be a way to kind of help balance some of that. Um, but I know for me personally, that's something that I've been able to kind of do and stick to and just make sure that I've got my normal routine down and sticking to it as much as possible. Um, how is everybody doing with self-care? So I know Lisa mentioned that um, she's mom at a certain time and she puts her computer away, but Lisa, I mean, not just to you, but anybody can chime in. How are you making time for just you? Um... Well, you know what? The kids go to bed it's still at their normal time. We haven't uh, changed it because they're still going to daycare. They're still trying to be as normal as possible. So they're still out the door by eight. They're still doing their thing. So uh, before I log onto the computer, I do try to walk around either outside or inside. I live in a cul-de-sac, so I'll try. My dog yesterday decided to escape the yard. So my exercise was chasing a dead oh. dog back into the yard. <laughs> Oh no. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, just trying to take a few moments to like have a lunch break because it's so easy to keep working and all of a sudden you realize what time it is and you're like, I didn't even eat. So I kind of set my Fitbit to remind me at certain times to get up, to start moving around and then walk away from the computer because I feel like when the massage parlors open back up again, I'm going to be the first in line because I'm not used to sitting at a desk and work on a computer. Like my shoulders hurt. Um, and then also I have a really nice husband that has rubbed my feet and my back a few times when they have been hurting. <laughs> awesome. That's nice. Thank you so much for sharing. We appreciate that. Lots of baths, painting, organizing, and cooking. Yep. Yep. Those are some good things. Um, so awesome. Does anybody have any other questions for Stephanie? Um, I, I did want to mention Stephanie. I don't know if you mentioned this or not. Um, but, um, for services, you are considered an essential service, and um, you can also do um, over the phone or FaceTime or Zoom types of sessions as well, correct? Yes, we are considered essential, and I am still coming to the office, and I still go to St. Joe's, um, and it's case-by-case -case basis. We're able to do Zoom like we're doing today. I'm available by phone for therapy or just a consultation, or if you just need if you have some questions that you want answered, um, I'm here as a support. Um, I did want to say one more thing about the getting outside. Uh, coming out of winter, we are all vitamin D deficient and we get our vitamin D from absorbing it through our skin from the sun. So getting outside even just for a few minutes a day and letting your skin be exposed and soaking up some of that natural feel good juice is really important. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, that is, can be a huge um, mood booster. And it's, I mean, it's good for everything. It's good for your hair, your skin, your nails, all that good stuff too. So um, get that vitamin D. Hopefully you guys can enjoy some today. <laughs> Stephanie, thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, I do have a copy of the presentation. Would that be okay to um, send out to those that requested as well, Stephanie? 
Absolutely. Okay, awesome. And this is being recorded, so um, we will have a copy of this available too. But thank you all for attending. If you have any other questions, you can follow up with Stephanie directly or feel free to um, let me know. We've got um, a couple packets from Yorkshire. So if you guys are interested in receiving those packets, I can send those out to the group. Um, great job, Stephanie. Lots of um, good information. Um, thank you so much. So you got some. Thank a you lot for having me. A lot of thank yous coming through the chat. Oh, everybody's saying thank you. You guys are so sweet. <laughs> and thank you so much, Stephanie. You guys have a great weekend. Um, enjoy the sunshine. And um, we'll see you next week.